Hello. Hi. Okay. See, you see how this is gonna be? Is it gonna be okay? Can you hear me? Oh. Hi, everybody. Okay. Marie, Caroline, Rhonda, Homesmaker, Nancy, Michelle, Felt, Charles, Charles. Um, let's see. Yeah, I knew, I knew the mic was on. I couldn't figure out. And Jill. Hey, Jill. Um, I will look. I will look at the, the DM. Um, I'm so glad y'all are here. And I, uh, Charlie's Angel. Um, so, okay. So I, I was looking at like different, um, is that music okay? I think it's kind of nice, you know? Um, so I was looking at different, uh, you know, Twitch streams that show, you know, that do kind of some sewing stuff like, like this. Uh, well, they don't, there's some crocheting and there is some sewing. Absolutely. Some people who sew, um, and do projects. Quill Tony, you should check her out. She's really cool. And also a couple different people have, have done patchwork that I've seen. And I'm sure there's others. I hope there's others because there's not too many sewing people on Twitch yet. But I think that, um, okay, good, good. Hey, Deadshaft. Just a guy sewing. Love this. Love this. Yeah. So, um, oh, I'm so glad you came. Um, so, I've looked at, you know, what other people have done and, you know, this is, this is kind of how it works. The, the camera is a little bit yellow here, but I think I can fix it. Hang on. At least a little bit. Ah, yes. That's much better. I look appropriately pasty. I look as pasty as I always am. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Oh, that's probably better yet. The lighting is a little, you know, it's a little... Well, maybe that was better. Hang on. Yeah. I think that. Anyway, um, so so it seems that um, that this is kind of a, a good way to go, having that camera on, on over here uh, with what I'm sewing, and I'll tell you what I'm going to work on. It's a bit epic. Um, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to work on this COVID quilt. And I would love to know, hey, hey, Eric, hi, I, I was working so hard right up until the time it was time to go live. And honey, I just I couldn't get I couldn't message you because because the Internet is, you know, the way it is. And it I just want to treat it with care. I turn off my phone. I turn off the iPad. I turn off anything that has a, a Wi-Fi connection so that it can the stream can be as strong as possible. So, um, hey, Kathy. Kathy from Chicago. Um, hey, Bib. Oh, God, you came, you came. Um, I'll show you what I'm working on. I would love to know what you're working on. And you can tell me. It's too bad you can't show pictures in Twitch, you know, in the chat, but that's probably a good thing. I mean, I can imagine some people would abuse that privilege. <laughs> oh, God. Um, and let's see. So I was working, I was working to get this set up. Um, it's very exciting. I, I wonder. I wonder how it'll go. Um, I'm going to show you what I'm working on. And actually I have two different things. Um, I have two different projects. One here is, is in my lap here. And then I also have some piecing that I want to do some hand piecing. And part of my prep today was to, um, oh yeah, I'm going to show the full quilt. Yes. I'm going to show the, this whole, monstrosity before I begin um, to, to do some big stitching on it um, like this like this um, part of my practice to, or part of my setup today was practicing um, a set in seam and because I have to be clear and I thought about putting it up on the screen uh, in a little like in a little graphic um, yeah um, t that says this is not a demo. <laughs> because it is it isn't you know we're just gonna hang out and sew and and see how this goes and i just can't believe it you know it wouldn't be nice um and i get focus time on this and but i don't want anyone to drop in and think i'm teaching because this would not be a very good
good camera for that. You know, it's not quite that way and it's not a, it's not set up for that exactly. So still though, I wanted to practice my little set in seam because I really want to work on that, that quilt. Um, I can do, I mean, I'll do some if I, if I want to switch, which I may, cause you know, we get, we get tired of one project and move to the other, you know, but, um, my stars are fine, but setting in this hexagon piece is, it's killing me. So I was like, I, I'm not teaching on this, this little Sunday so social, but I don't want to embarrass myself by trying to, <laughs> trying to do this thing and just getting it wrong. I'm close, I'm close, but I just, I don't know. Anyway, anyway. Um, oh, wow. Wow, wow. So Michelle says, I've been hiding a red cross in all my quilts till the pandemic is over. That's amazing. That's really cool. That's really cool. Awesome. Um, okay, so you wanna see this thing? I've, I've, I've been working on this since like, well, April or, well, May, I guess May of 2020. So it's, yeah, I mean, I need to finish it, but I had never done hand, like needle turn to applique before. <clears throat> and I'm actually going to replace some of the, um, sorry, replace some of the pieces on this quilt once I get some more quilting done because I'm just not happy with how it looks. And I used to be somebody who, I mean, I just would race through things and I don't, I didn't really care so much. And I, and I don't, I'm not uh, too particular about getting something absolutely perfectly right, but I really care about this quilt and I want to fix a few things that I'm just not happy with. Also, it's, it's been traveling with Eric and me you know, since we've gone to London and back and yeah, and that's another reason it's not finished yet because we've been kind of busy, but it is my COVID quilt and, and here, here it is. So you, you know, I think you know that I like, um, yeah, Caroline, I would love, to be taught how to do this. I need, I need a teacher on that hexagon set in. I do, I need someone to really just take me through it, you know? Um, okay, so this is my COVID quilt. You know I love pictorial quilts. And I hope you can see the whole thing. Okay. Oh, I should probably use that chair. Well, let's see how we do. Okay, so I might have to show it to you in, in pieces. Let's see here. Okay, so it says, stay safe. Okay, I'll, I'll bring it up closer too. And then, whoop, sorry, there you go. USA 2020, <laughs> I should put 2020 through 2021. Stop COVID-19, uh, one love. And then I'll show you some details. I've got some essential workers in there and um, some flowers and a little animal that is not a, you can't really tell what it is and I like that um, heart medicine and then it's backwards for me and then um, sorry Oh wow, it's so confusing to do this backwards, it's crazy. Um, then some more, oh jeez, okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, yeah, then, then some more flowers, a little nurse there. And there's all these quilt blocks too. Some little houses, you know, stay, stay at home kind of deal. Another animal. And, and, and I, um, yeah, so, so I, I there's a few places, you know, that I want to do over. So I guess I've got this close-up right here that I should take advantage of, right? Another reason this thing isn't done yet is because, thanks, thanks, just a guy. Another reason it's not finished is there's no, there's no batting in this. It's a, it's not, I mean, it's a wall hanging. It's a, I guess it's an art quilt, you know, essentially. And, um, Oh yeah, the quilt blocks. I meant to, to tell you, they were orphan blocks that I got at a um, uh, you know vintage like antique mall or something like that. And I just had them forever and I thought, I'm gonna put them on. I just like it. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I like them too. They are antique, good eye, uh, Marie. 
actually these, these are, these are mine. These little, I call them little dovetail blocks. Um, they were part of a UFO, a paper pieced block I designed. I mean, I just sort of put it together and I've got a few of those around, but yeah, these are antique. Those are antique. So I started to, I started to hand quilt and all the pieces, by the way, like they're just hand cut out. You know, I didn't use a template or anything. I just, I just went for it. Um, and I started to, I don't think you'll be able to see this, but I started to just quilt it with regular quilting thread. You know, I mean, I just, I really wanted to start quilting. And so I jumped in and then I was like, well, you can't really see the quilting and I'm glad you like it. Oh, thank you. Um, it's really scary showing a quilt. I mean, it is, it really is. And this is so weird, but I like weird quilts. So, so I started, here's a good, you know, I think, let's see. Okay. When, when I did TV, you know, I would, would have a manicure, but anyway, so this is just kind of normal stitching thread and, and I was doing it and I just didn't like it. I mean, I loved doing the quilting. I loved to quilt it, but it wasn't the effect I wanted. And so then I was like, well, I'm going to do big stitches. You know, like I, I, my friend Heather said, big stitch quilting and Sashiko is not the same thing. So I don't want to say that it's Sashiko, although I am using Sashiko thread. Um, I've got three colors. I'm going mostly with white, but, um, but so now I'm happy. Now I'm happy because I want you to see, I want you to see the quilting. And so I'm doing like little circles just cause I like doing those. This is, this is an example of something I'm doing over. I mean, that was like one of the first appliques I did on this and I don't know, I don't like it. I don't think it looks good. And there's a couple of the letters that are just, they're just a little bit, I don't know. I really love this quilt, so I want to make it right, you know? Um, but my little houses look good and, sorry, it's all kind of wonky. And I'm really proud of my letters and things. So yeah, so that's the thing. So, so um, a, a couple people are asking about background and it is um, chambray. I had these pieces of, um, chambray it is chambray isn't it well it's it's yeah yeah chambray from um uh robert kaufman and in chicago i did not have my sewing machine out it was deep in the um uh a storage unit that we have down in the basement and it's also if i recall <laughs> the last time i sewed on it there's something there's something wrong with it i need to take it in but it was covid it was not the right time to do that um so I hand pieced, I hand pieced the, the backing as well. And that was like my first ever experience hand piecing anything was the back. And I wanted to get it big enough to, you know, to be my little canvas. And, and I didn't have enough of, of one color, you know, of the, of the one color. I had two different colors and I just don't, I just don't mind that. I, I have a quilt that that I talk about in guild in guild meetings, and oh gosh, um, uh, and I, I ran out of red uh, in this quilt, one of my favorite quilts I've ever made in like 2013. I was working on it and I ran out of red, and it was a particular Kona red, you know, and I I just didn't want to stop sewing, and I didn't want to go and find that particular red online or at the quilt shop and then wait for it. And so I, I had a different red. It's not exactly the same shade. And I just thought, well, it's fine. And so I'm on this crusade really to take the, take the formal sort of uh, like, what, what's the word I want? Fastidious um, sort of cold, like preci precise, you know, the standard of precision that, I don't know. It just, it's kind of the, the, the norm, I think with, with all of the, um, t TV shows and the magazines, of course, you want to do your, your best work if you're teaching and showing people, of course. But I, I look at these quilts and you look at them with me on at quilt church and 
they're not perfect and a lot of times they they have such unique they have unique character and they're they have soul you know because they're they're not perfect they're they're normal because they were made by normal people and so when i have you know a red in my quilt that doesn't quite match i'm i love that i think it adds it adds something to the quilt you know so um and then the back the back by the way is uh linen and it's an old sheet it was a linen bed sheet and I, I used that because I needed a big piece of fabric and I didn't have one. And also uh, I used it as in defiance because you're never supposed to do that, right? You're never supposed to do that. You're never supposed to use a sheet for the back of your quilt and you're never supposed to like tie a quilt. I mean, the first time I tied a quilt, it was like, <gasps> sacrilege you know because you're supposed to quilt it or have it long armed you know tying a quilt just isn't it's not in fashion right now the quilt industry doesn't make much money if you uh, don't buy a long arm and you tie your quilts but um but tying a quilt like i feel like the it's it's warmer right a tied quilt is warmer than a quilt that's been really heavily quilted um Hey, <laughs> Marianne. Yeah, quilts with heart, not clinical precision. Exactly. It's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great. Um, and Caroline, I want you to tell us more about Esther Miller. I don't don't know about her, um, but I'm sorry to hear that she passed away. That's I, I don't. I'd like to know about her. Um, anyway, the the tide quilt is is warmer right? Because there's more, it's like loftier. I mean, there's more air that gets trapped in it. This is my theory because it's like a, a puffier quilt rather than one that's just very, very flat because it's been quilted within an inch of its life. And obviously beautiful, right? Great quilts, thumbs up, period. But, but a tied quilt is kind of, it's kind of cozy in a way that uh, uh, another quilt might not be if it was really long armed heavily or whatnot. So I used a bed sheet. And uh, I should say though too, that Ebony Love, a friend for a long time, and she was on Quilty a lot. Um, she, she, I asked her about this and she wrote about, about this using a sheet on the back of your quilt uh, as the backing of your quilt. She wrote about, about that for Quilty because I was very curious. And she had really good things to say. She said, you can do it, you know, you can totally do it, but you have to be very careful about the, um, the blend, like what your, your sheet is made, made out of. If it's, you know, poly, polyester and, well, it wouldn't be spandex probably. Maybe it would, maybe you have spandex sheets, no judgment. But you know, the, the way the fabric would behave in the long arm, if you're, the top of your quilt is cotton, 100% cotton, and the bottom is like a poly blend, nightmare, you know, nightmare. So that's, that's an important thing to remember. Yeah, as long as the batting, wadding won't break up and form a nasty ball in the quilt, go for it. Exactly. Esther Miller, okay, hand quilting. Marie, we'll, we'll watch that. I, I made this um, screen that you see. Um, I won't get too technical, but when you're working with this program that I'm using to stream, you create scenes. So like the stream starting soon screen is a scene and this is a scene. And in this scene, you can't see it, but I have the internet available to me. So we might take a break, watch some stuff. I think that'd be great. I think it'd be nice. Um, hey, there's 28 people here. That's great. That's cool. Welcome. Um, yeah, and we'll watch that about Esther Miller. I almost said Esther Williams. Um, so we'll watch some stuff and talk about some stuff. And the other thing I was gonna say is that <laughs> oh yeah, I'm glad that there are people here today because I didn't put a anything on Instagram or Facebook about it. I thought a maiden voyage, maybe I should just fly under cover of darkness, you know, and not like advertise it huge, hugely because I knew there would be friends here, right? Um, and I, I just, so I just kind of left it. I just kind of left it alone. So I should probably do what my mother wants me to do and I didn't practice this shot, but oh, I think it's, I think it's fine. Um, yeah. 
oh, oh, you'll love this. Marianne in particular. This is my garbage. <laughs> a Liberty department store bag. That's where all my little loose threads go. Hey, it's, it's classy around here. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm gonna do some circles here. Um, brr, brr, brr. Am I? Yeah, I am. Let's see. Oh, and I still, I, the, my flag is kind of like not finished. I, I, I'm still playing around with what I want to do with it exactly. Um, okay. And you know, some of the applique pieces, they might have been okay, but I've, yeah, carried it around and then smashed this hoop all over it, you know, for, for a year and a half. So that's not helping. thought of something is this this is sort of oppressively bright on there so bear with me I'm just kind of figuring this stuff out I think you'll be able to see that and it won't be quite so quite so bright let's see hmm well if I wasn't a vampire if I wasn't so pale as to be a vampire it might be different but I think it's okay all right let's see Loose Liberty, <laughs> we're honored safe space. Yes, yes. The two camera thing is working good. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. So these things, by the way, I had Sashiko thread in, uh, you know, in my little fabric box or my um, notions box. I'll show you actually, it's really small. It's interesting. Um, and they were skeins, you know, of Sashiko. But these spools, Eric and I were in like a flea market kind of thing early on in our time here. And he found them, these spools. They had other thread on them, probably ancient thread. And he said, hey, those are kind of cool. And I said, yes, dear, yes, they are. And so I had my Sashiko thread in the skeins. I've never known how to manage those things, and embroidery, floss, skeins, and they just become a nightmare mess. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. So I wrapped it all around the spools. So that's what that is. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I think I, I figured I figured you were you were praising Liberty, Caroline. Okay, Marka. Hey, Marka. Oh yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen you before. I know you. Um, so Mark, Mark. It's Mark. It's Mark. Mark who said video magazine. Um, about Quilt Church, I love that. So you're working on binding. Let me see what else is going on over here. Um, Cause you, you, you said, okay, let's see. I feel like other people sh shared what they were working on. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, Michelle's hiding red crosses in all her COVID era quilts, amazing. Um, let's see. Kona, okay, well, Rhonda mentioned what she's using, of the music. Hmm, well, if you don't, if you haven't said what you're working on, I'd love to know. Um, yeah, oh, quilt coat, okay. Holmes Maker's making a quilt coat, love it. Um, yeah, fill us in. Okay, Marianne's setting up a quilt to baste on the long arm. Wow. What kind of long arm do you have, Marianne? Where's my pin cushion? Here it is. And, okay, quilt coat. Love it. Kai. Okay. Kai. Kai. Viv. So, okay. okay. I, think, I think what you're saying is that your name is Kai. You have to help me. You have to help me. Okay. 
here's my what's that I do have crisps okay gosh it's a little it's a little daunting okay um and by the way um this this little quilt church sign it's my ad you know it isn't um it isn't covering up any of the camera you know it's just down there but it kind of feels like it is that would be covering up the camera do you want to see you know what i can do i can do i can make this camera bigger the one that you have on me the one i have on me i think i will so then you can have kind of this long shot Eric, if you're watching, am I getting good or am I getting good? I shouldn't say that until I fix this. Okay, let's just see if I can. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Okay. Okay, wait, okay. Here we go. I don't know if you can see that or not. Well, you might be able to. I don't know. Hey, Caitlin. Hi. <laughs> so Caitlin, you're, you're making waffles. Totally approved, fully approved. And then working on your ep ukulele wall hanging. I don't know what that is, but, but I like it. There's a ukulele involved. I think, I think people who, you know, have ukuleles in their life, whether it's patchwork or whatever it is, probably pretty good, pretty good people. Um, let's see, let's see. Let me just, Maybe I, maybe I don't know. Hmm. hmm. Maybe I can't do it. Well, that's all right. That's, oh, 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 oh. I know, I know. Hmm. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Oh, oh. Hmm. Nope, can't. Well, live and learn, you know, fix it, get it better every time. Okay. Okay, Jackie Gehring, walking foot quilt design. Love it. Challenge quilt. Handy quilter, simply 16. English paper piecing hexagons with scraps. Hi. Hey, Jean. I think you might be new around here. Caitlin. Tiara, Sweet 16, sit down, love it, yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you, darling. Eric is here. I'm a, ma I'm a mistress of tech. I think I've learned that you can't change the, uh, the di dimensions of a camera once you're actually streaming. It's interesting. Okay, Hexies, Bonnie Hunter. Oh, nice, nice. There's a Bonnie Hunter retreat, applique Christmas tree skirt, yes. Mm, that's what I was gonna say, okay, okay. I have to actually do some sewing, I can't. I don't think I should probably sew while I'm looking at the chat. Oh, I have an idea. Okay, I need to stop. Um, you know, Christmas is coming. And wouldn't it be fun to like, Eric, we need a Christmas tree here. We have room, you know? So I could put up like Christmas decorations and like, could like sew on Christmas things. I don't know. I just really like doing this stuff. Okay. Christmas music, you know? I don't always get into the Christmas thing that much, but I feel like this year I might. Hmm. It's literally the first time this has happened, of course. Live. No, no, no. A little too um, inspirational. Uh, you know, you have to be very careful on YouTube and Twitch and all this stuff that you don't play copyrighted music. Because if you if you play copyrighted music, you can be it's a copyright strike. They call it on YouTube, and uh, you can lose your channel if you have three copyright strikes. It's like three strikes, you're out, and they'll take away your channel. And I think it's really hard to uh, to get another one. I mean, I think you're just out of luck. Okay. 
my spool system working perfectly. I'm not really drawing my circles on. I'm just kind of winging it. but I think drawing them on now is good. <laughs> sing my, Eric, I'm not gonna sing. I, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do, um, oh yeah, um, trying to do two things at once, you know, like, well, three, be a tech mistress. And so, and, Read the chat. Ah, Carol, interesting. Oh, where's my thimble? I think I wear my thimble on the wrong finger. I think you're supposed to do it like on that finger, right? I mean, that's what Jenny Byer does. So it's clearly what you're supposed to do. But I put it on my, on my middle finger. I don't know. When I was learning how to type, like in high school, God, I, yeah. I don't know, you know, sewing under pressure is not necessarily a good thing. Um, I hope I just don't make a mess of all this. Um, but I, I learned, I, I, I don't know, I just got, I got the B wrong. Like I reached for the, the letter B with the wrong thumb or whatever. And I just never corrected it. So I feel like this could be a little bit like that, you know, maybe I just... This chair before. <laughs> okay. Quilting towards yourself. Oh, okay, good, Marie. Good, good. Oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> really? A cat is obsessed with thread. Love that. Okay. This little ring light's actually pretty awesome. Gus. Um, Eric, so when the pandemic started, um, I had never seen any Marvel Universe movies. I had, I had never seen um, I think I saw one of the Iron Man movies, but other than that, I really had not seen any of the, the Marvel movies, you know? And I don't know if you, if you heard about this or it was kind of a, a trend, like a pandemic uh, activity that a lot of people did, I guess, where you watched all the movies, um, all of the Marvel movies in order either in order of how they came out, like when, when they were released, or um, the order of, of like the chronological order in the story. So for example, um, I've, got a, I've got a tip maybe, Marianne, for you, because I'm the same, it tangles so badly. I mean, it really, yeah. So I've got, a, I've got a tip I'll show you. If it works for you, great, it works for me a little bit. Anyway, so I so we did. We watched all of the Marvel movies in order of the story. So, for example, we um, we started with Captain Marvel. Is that right, Eric? Yeah. 
Captain Marvel, because that's the sort of the first movie, you know, like before the Avengers. So, so I think it was 20, how many movies is it? I'm like caught up on that. How many movies is it, Eric? It's like 28 or something. It's a lot of movies. Um, and it was really, really fun. Okay, Marianne, here's what I do. Here's what I do, okay. So I go in, and this, ha this is true when I'm threading my thread too. So if I, because I hate threading the needle, so I really kind of push it with how long my tail is. But when I, when I come up, I stick my pinky. I stick my pinky in the, you know, in that. So it keeps it, it keeps it apart, you know? And then I drop the pinky. And it, I mean, it seems to work pretty well. So you get a little pinky um, exercise. <laughs> okay, it was 23 movies when we started, Eric says. Oh, by the way, I hate this. I hate this little, this little red heart. I just, I just hate it. So I'm gonna get rid of it. <laughs> FYI, you just can't see it, you know? It doesn't, it doesn't work. So let's get rid of it right now and erase my shame. So did that make sense? Um, Marianne, does that, what do you think? If I miss things in the chat, I'm so sorry. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Marie, I bought, uh, someone mentioned the clover. Hey, Kathy, no, we're just chilling. We're hanging out. Um, someone mentioned just now the clover leather thimble. I bought one. I just bought one for my thumb actually. Uh, Cause when I was doing the applique parts of this, you know, I could show some, I could do an applique if you want to see that. This is not a demo. I have to remember that this is not a demo, but I could. Um, yeah, when I was doing all this applique, my thumb would get really beat up. So I bought a clover thimble, a leather one. I love clover. I think cl clover is my brand. It's interesting. I, I could never use anything but Fonz and Porter, obviously. <laughs> And now that I'm not doing any of that and haven't for some time, I can buy my own notions and I can do what I please with all my supplies. And it's actually like, it's a really big deal. I mean, it's a really big deal to have that independence. And so I'm, I'm a clover girl. I love it. Okay, that's done. Leather thimbles, interesting. Good, good. Yeah? <laughs> she is most skilled. Okay, that made my... That's a little bit weird. I'm a little bit hot. I might have to change my sweater. This is the first quilt Eric's seen me make. <laughs> and it's taking so long. He's never seen me sew on a sewing machine, ever. Because since we've known each other, I haven't had one out. It's kind of sad. Okay, ta-da, little circle there. Okay, now. You know, it took me a while, by the way, to <clears throat> figure out how to do the knot on the back because I don't know, I was just kind of making it harder than it is. It's gonna be really hard to see, probably, because I've got white on white thread, but you just take, 
Let's see if I can come in really close. You just take a little nip of the fabric. You know, don't, don't get the front, right? You don't want it to show, but the backing fabric, just take a little nip so you have a loop and then just go in through the loop. And be careful not to tangle, right? And then that's it. I can try to show you again when I have a different color thread. But this isn't a demo. <laughs> All right, I will be right back. I'm gonna put on a different shirt because, you know, I'm a little bit hot. So I'm gonna put on this scene. I'll be back in two shakes, just very, very quickly. Okay, and this is the scene from Quilt Church, okay? Be right back. Hi. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, yeah, okay, that's why. No, no. Oh, okay. That was a relief. I was like, what happened? But anyway, that was, that was everything's fine. See, everything's fine. And I have polka dots on. Um, okay. Okay, Felt. I'm so glad you came. Thanks for coming. For I mean, this is the first ever time we're doing this. You know, I, 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 I like it. I think it's very nice. So I think maybe it's going to be a thing. Maybe it's going to be a thing. Oh, music. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, I know. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, the stick on thimble stuff. Interesting. Okay, hang on one second. I think it's it's doing its it's doing its thing. Hmm. There. All right. Okay. So this is this this pen. That's a, f a friction pen. The um, the pens that erase, and they are really really great for um, for quilters because when you apply heat to them, when you touch the, them with an iron, they complete the marks completely disappear. Which I mean, it's it's amazing. It's really amazing. So you don't like. I love these pens for, for writing because I often make mistakes and I need to erase something, but, but it's, um, it's, uh, 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 you don't, you don't actually use the eraser. So this is, this is the pen and then the erasers on the back, that little rubber nip. <laughs> and, uh, but you don't, when you mark on your quilt, you don't then erase with the, the rubber thing you just you put heat you put the iron on it yeah they're amazing um and but but i have found a flaw in this in this tool because i really like to press pressing is my favorite part of making patchwork there's sewing there's cutting sewing and pressing and i love the ironing board i mean it makes things crisp and it makes them nice things that don't lie flat when you're sewing them suddenly lie flat when you when you iron them or you press them but when you press things that have been marked with a friction pen the marks disappear so i i don't know i'm having trouble uh with my latest with the hand piecing stuff because my, all my marks disappear I have a question for people. Do you have more than one project going? Do you? Over here. Do you have five? <laughs> oh, good, Nancy. Well, I'm glad I inspire you. You all inspire me. I, I never thought I would be in the quilt world. I mean, I just, I was doing my own thing and then the quilting just snuck up on me and I was I was pulled in to the family business and I just quilters are the best people <laughs> just sort of period I'm a little close to my hoop here um, okay three so Molly hey Molly I didn't see you come in hi um, mm -hmm, I'm so glad you're here uh, okay, Molly's got three projects going. Viv has six. I think... Okay, yes, always Nancy, Kathy, yes. Myra, yes. Okay, 30. <gasps> Caroline has 30. Caroline, you're an overachiever with the um, UFOs. That's good. Uh, three, Myra's got three. A dog quilt. Oh, Eric and I, we love... Eric, how many, you know what? It's good for Eric to, to hear this if he's still in the chat, I hope he is. Because you don't, you've not been around many quilters, you know, my mom and me, but it is very normal for multiple projects to be going on at the same time. So Eric and I love to 
go to the parks here in London and watch watch the doggos. I don't know. London's got some great dogs. I mean, they're just they're just I don't know. They're just great. They're just I don't know. There there's so many of them too. A lot of dogs in London and um and we, you know, I I would love to have a little doggy and make him a quilt. That would be really great. Marianne Marianne made my future dog a quilt that I have at home that is just waiting for a little pup. And I'll never forget that. I mean, that we go back a long way, Marianne and I. She's she's pretty special. Gosh, she used my fabric. In the, anyway, it's I'll probably get kind of choked up if I talk about it. But I've got a dog quilt ready to go. <laughs> three to four yep Caroline I hope you can come back I mean I th I think I'm just gonna sew for a while and anybody who wants to hang out you know hang out come back Oops. you know what I just realized Eric um, if you're here, I just realized something, you know, when you move to a new city, you know, making friends is like, you know, it's kind of a thing you got to try to do and it's not easy. And I don't mean to be sentimental, but well, I have friends with you all, you know, and that feels really good. Maybe that's one of the reasons that I, that I like this so much, you know, Marianne, you see me cry when I talk about making friends in London. I did that to the London Modern Quilt Guild as well. But it's really true, you know? I mean, I know you all now. Philip Larkin. Um, yeah. I mean, I know, I know you, right? We're getting to know each other. <sighs> Oops. So by the way, this isn't a demo, but when you have thinner thread. I don't know how many of you have done hand quilting. And I mean, obviously I'm, this is my first, well, it's not my first, but it's the first one I'm really serious about. And you know, I'm sewing with, with floss. I mean, it's, it's Sashiko thread. It's extremely thick. Oop. Okay. Well, that doesn't work. I'm going to work on how to get close ups better, but, um, uh, yeah. Quilting friends are wonderful. Well, Brendan, um, when you're just using regular thread, I'll I'll show you. I'll show you with how many of you have done. You know, Caroline, it's true. We're just we're three hours away. We Eric and I are ready to travel. You know, we want to go go places in Europe now that we can travel, you know, carefully. So I want to show you. So yeah, if you've done hand quilting, um, let me know. Um, because you may know about, you know, popping the, the thread through the top. I'm coming up through the bottom here because the knot is too big to try to bury. I'll show you what I mean. This is really thin thread, but God, okay. I just blinded myself looking at the the light up there. Oh no. I really did. I looked at the lights up there and now I can't see my needle. Horror. Come on, little buddy. That's funny. <laughs> this, 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 this mix is a little bit too cinematic. I put it on classical and 
Not sure what they what they think is classical. <laughs> you guys, I don't know. This isn't a demo. Okay, interesting clue. Mm. <laughs> no. Oh no, this music is not helping me. Mm -mm. Uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. No, no, no. doing this no it's not my style it's not my style let's see hmm classical really really epidemic sound really um hmm hmm oh i know what i could do you know it's public domain chopin i love chopin let's just do chopin yeah i don't know that was they had a different uh, um definition of classical Chopin, you know, YouTube, you can find just like, let's see. Wow, the best of Chopin, a video on YouTube, on YouTube that's the best of Chopin, 78 million views. Pretty cool. Uh, Nocturnes, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hmm. Hopefully. Okay. Well, I didn't get that threaded. Let's see. I would like to try again. It's riveting, isn't it? Is it raining? No. <laughs> God. Oh no. The pressure. Well, no one's actually watching, right? You're just like working on your stuff. All right, great. So this, this thread is really, 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 really thin or fine. It's I think 80 weight or something. It's crazy. So I tied a knot, like I wrapped my thread around my needle like five times. So, okay, so here. So if you, so if I'm hand quilting this with really fine thread, I mean, you can barely see it probably. Gus the cat is, you know, not gonna be able to see it probably, but um, you can come in from the top when you're, when you're quilting, okay? Because, because you, take, you take a stitch through the top and not through, like not through the whole quilt. Like this, I've got the, the back and the uh and the top but but when you take a first stitch when you're hand quilting you can pull it through and then bury the knot Hold on. i pulled it through but you bury the knot you like pull it until it pops and it hides the knot inside with my luck i don't know that i should be doing this at all Yeah, okay. So you bury the knot there, and then you pull the tail a little bit. This is not a demo. And you pull the tail a little bit, clip it, and then just with your fingernail, you kind of scooch it down and bury it there. Okay, yeah. But I can't do that this time because I'm using Sasha Go Thread. So that just wouldn't do. When the knot is too big, I try twice. Let's see. Um, <laughs> um, it's pretty big stitch stuff, but it's effective. Yeah, yeah. When the knot is too big, I try twice. Yeah, when you're burying the knot. I know. I mean, sometimes it's like, well, we've all done it. If you've, if you've done the bury the knot thing, you, um, you make the knot too big, and then you're like, it'll go, it'll go, like I can just tug it a little bit more and it'll go in and then you break the thread, right? What we, what we go through as quilt makers, I swear. <laughs> um, let's see here. You know, it's interesting on Twitch, I've 
seen, there's, there's a channel called Button Fox. I subscribe to them. Oh, and by the way, if you, if you subscribe to the channel, you don't have to watch ads, $4.99. Um, I'm a great salesperson. <laughs> Um, but if you, if you do that, it'd be great. It would be great. It helps, you know, buy second cameras and things like that. Um, but there's a really good channel called Button Fox. And I mean, some of these Twitch people, like the, the, the Button Fox, uh, channel, it's a, it's a gal and a guy in Australia, I think. Yeah. And they, um, they do cosplay like costumes, you know, so they're making these wonderful costumes and it's a whole thing. I mean, they have a set, there's like, they're sewing in like a garage or something. And there's such, it's amazing how, how, how good the production is. I mean, this is pretty bare bones, you know, like I'm just like the, the second camera is the big, the big exciting thing. But, um, but you know, over time, maybe I'll get a whole studio. I've got big, I've got big dreams. I got big dreams for this, this little channel. I mean, I don't know. Like I told you last night, I think, it's the most fun I've had in the, in the industry since Quilt Folk, you know, back in like 2016. 2015, yeah, 2016. sewing exactly so you know I'd like to make Eric a quilt but he's always around have have those of you with spouses have you made your spouse a quilt specifically for them I mean I don't know maybe maybe it's not you know I don't know necessary so much I mean you're with them so a quilt you make would be for the two of you probably but I don't know he's the great love in my life so I feel like I should you know do that you know I met him in a bar <laughs> I can tell you I could tell you how I met him do you want to know I want to find a balance between talking too too much and I don't know. I don't know how to do this. This is the first time. Okay, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I knit my partner a scarf in secret. Hey C Ben. So I'm not sure if I've if I've seen you in here before, but if if I have, welcome back. And if not, welcome. Um C Ben says, I knit my partner a scarf in secret. It was an ordeal. <gasps> Lots of frantic knitting while he was in his night classes. Very good, very sneaky. How did it turn out? Was it good? Did you were you happy with the result? I hope so. Oh, Rhonda, you met your husband in a bar as well. You, uh, you and I have, yeah, we have, that's, that's something big we have in common. I mean, Rhonda, let's see. And, and you've made your husband and your son quilts. Interesting. Oh, good. I'm glad. Oh yeah. Uh, Jessica, um, uh, the, it's button Fox, button Fox. Uh, like like buttons like on your shirt, <laughs> button fox. Ah! It was good. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, 
If Eric knows what you're making, he can get the quilt he really wants by picking out some colors. It's true. I kind of, yeah. Don't guys always say their favorite color is blue? This isn't my best circle, but that's all right. You know, a lot of guys say blue. I feel like, I don't know. That's a, that's a generalization. So if you're if you're new, if this is your first time on my channel, I think there's some people out there that that that's that's true for them. Um, so you, so this is this is the first time we've done this, and by we I mean the quilt the quilt church congregation. So the thing you see up on your screen, that's a little ad for my regular show, which is three times a week. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. Central, as you can see, and Saturdays at 4 p.m. And it's totally different. It's, um, it's, I don't know, we nerd out on quilts and we call it quilt church because we kind of go and like worship at the altar of quilts. So we just spend time like, you know, meditating on quilts. And what that looks like is me um, researching things, uh, pulling up quilts, talking about one quilt for a while. Last night we talked about a collection of quilts. Um, and you know, there was more to say about Gerald Roy and Paul Pilgrim, but you know, I kind of try to read the room. It's impossible. I mean, I don't know. I just, I felt like, okay, let's, let's wind it up. But there was a lot more to say. I mean, I could say it now. I mean, I could show you the things. I didn't get to everything I wanted to get to. Um, but anyway, so, so if you watch the playback, uh, new people of some of the some of the shows that have come before you'll see what I mean and it's like my favorite thing to do and it's new and I'm still working out a lot of things like most twitch channels at this point have like little animations uh, running across the screen and they have like sound effects and they have you know people are giving you can give me a tip that is a thing you can do. But I don't really know how it works. But people are like zinging and doing stuff. Um, and I don't mean to sound like a, <laughs> I just don't know about tech. That's not what I mean. But you know, I don't really know about Twitch yet because it's only been a couple months. But on, um, on the regular show, I mean, it's just getting better all the time. I learned how to do music, add music to my um, starting soon screen. I have a starting soon screen, it's pretty cool. And, uh, and a Be Right Back screen. And I even have a little, what is it? Um, the button thing. <laughs> God, I hate it, I hate it. Uh, it's stream, Streamlabs, Streamlabs, the little console thing. Yeah, the console thing. And I have a Yeti microphone right there. And I know Marianne really likes it when I do the ASMR. I'm gonna do ASMR for quilters. Tie off your knot. Take a running stitch. <laughs> Sorry. Now I just want to do it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. The bells and was. Oh no, I lost my. I lost my needle. I mean, I. I. Yeah. Yep. I did. Marianne, that's what I get. Oh, here it is. Ah. I. I just. I don't know. It's. <laughs> I know it's 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 kind of gross. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of oh, that's not it. What what in the heck? Oh, how strange. Okay, well that's good to know. I had another needle going. Is that true? Anyway, um, yeah. I mean, the bells and whistles. Like Twitch is really good at that functionality. But I agree. Like, I mean, this isn't this isn't a video game show, right? So. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna look for that later. Uh, it's not a video game show, so you know, like tipping for like an awesome kill on some, on some video game, obviously doesn't make sense, but I feel like there could be, there could be some fun to be had um, with some of that stuff. And I don't know, I don't know. I just have to keep exploring and, and learning about this whole thing. Um, okay, I think I see what's going on here. Gray, okay. <laughs> Jill, um, oh, there's so much good stuff here. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Um, <laughs> Carol, 
Your great nephew met his wife on Tinder, but they tell people they met in a bar. Great. My best friend in Chicago, she met her husband on Tinder and they, they wear that proudly it's, but i understand why maybe maybe you wouldn't i don't know is tinder still a thing do they still do that um do they still do that um and jill you dated a guy once whose favorite color was orange and you just couldn't deal my favorite color was orange for a hot second and when i got married the first time long ago uh disastrously foolishly mistakenly um i put my bridesmaids in orange dresses i can't believe that that's true about my life, but I did. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. For everyone involved, including myself. It was, it was just, I don't know, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, just a guy sewing. My favorite color is a deep red maroon. However, I tried organizing my fabric only to realize I own a ton of blue fabrics. <laughs> well, gr you know, and gray. Those are, they're good neutrals though. It makes sense. These, these little guys got tangled up and I thought I had done so well. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Hmm. Really, Rhonda? Okay. Mm-hmm. We don't need whistles. Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. Music, no bells. Oh yeah, a blinking light over my left shoulder. It's true. That is the little alarm. Earlier, when I was setting this up, I saw, I saw that, and I was like, Ugh, nobody wants to see that thing. So let me, I think I can do, yeah. Oh, no, that's worse, hang on. Nope. If I do, if I do that, okay, no. <laughs> I can, I know what I can do. I know what I can do. Hang on. that if you are having trouble getting your um, thread to go through your needle, it's kind of gross, but you have like, you know, like oil, you know, like, like, you know, stuff on the side of your nose and it can, uh, it can help you get your, your needle, your um, thread kind of stiff usually. And it'll, it'll go in a little easier. No! Didn't work that time, but often it does. Probably because I just took a shower right before I came on. Hmm. What's going on here? Is this a different, different needle? No. <laughs> I know. A missing needle, a barefoot Mary. Yeah, I know. I'm barefoot and that's terrible. The, these, um, oh, Myra. Okay, good. Okay. Well, I'm sorry you had tech difficulty, but I have to say I was very glad that it was not mine. Um, it's just such a party foul. What's going on here? What's, what's happening? Chaos, entropy. Hang on, hang on. You see? Yeah, everything's falling apart. Okay, so I've got other Sashiko needles in here. I might use one. Yeah, see, clover, I'm telling you. It's my favorite. Jill. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so civilized. It's true. Myra. Yeah, how was the retreat, Myra? 
Was it good? Sometimes it's good to have bad internet because then you, you know, you're not on the internet except when it's time for this show, right? So let's see. Um, I like the tip to needle, needle the thread. Oh, huh. That is really good. That is very interesting. I shall try that right now. Um, okay, so, so Jill, why did we come to London? And for how long? Um, hang on. Um, we came because Eric's company, well, now I've got it. Now I've got it. Um, we came here because Eric's work, uh, his, the company he works for has, um, has offices here and the opportunity to be here, uh, you know, under the auspices of, of the company arose and it was crazy, right? In a pandemic to do that. This was, you know, this was coming from Eric's side of things, right? His, his, um, it was his idea, <laughs> you know, but, but it was, uh, it was interesting to, to consider it. And we, and we don't have kids and we don't have a pet at this time. And at that time we don't, we didn't even have like pets, you know, so we could, no, no one needed, no one needed us. So we could, we could come here and, and do that. Um, and I think, so, so we came last year and it was, it was interesting. I felt a little bit like, I felt a little bit scared of like, I don't know. I know I shouldn't care, but like public opinion, because, you know, Eric and I, we take the pandemic so seriously and we always have. So it's like, uh, okay, well, international travel doesn't seem like you're taking things very seriously, but both Eric and I, like Eric has pneumonia. He, he has, you know, just about every year, except this past year, he has, you know, he, he has pneumonia, he has lung stuff. And so, and he's a man. And it seemed at least in the beginning that COVID was, was, deadlier to men than women that was that was something that was true early on in the pandemic and i don't know if that continued to be true I, I don't know but i do remember that in the beginning and so it was scary really scary and we stayed inside i mean we just we just did not go anywhere we we really stayed inside as we were supposed to in chicago right so then this London stuff, you know, comes up and it's like, well, we could go and do that. And, and Eric could work in the office there and do that job. And, uh oh, wait a minute, I'm not doing a very good circle. So, so, and so what we did is someone told me once that you kind of have like a COVID, like you have COVID points or a COVID budget in terms of the risk that you take, you know? So it's like, well, you can go to the gym I mean, like now you could, you could say you go to the gym, but, but that's the only thing you do, you know, in public, like you don't go to restaurants, you, you know, you, you, you do take out, you do delivery, you know, you don't spend your COVID bucks, like, you know, in, you know, here and there, you sort of save up your, your COVID bucks and spend them, you know, where you really want to spend them. Does that make sense? Like, you have to reduce your risk of getting sick, reduce your risk of getting anyone else sick. And so, but you, you know, at a certain point I did, I did think, well, we still have to live. I mean, we have to, we have to, we can't stay inside forever, you know, anyway, but this was before all that. And, and so we decided, you know, we're going to spend our COVID points on an international flight. We're going to go to London. And that's <laughs> the anxiety of going to the airport and being in a plane. I mean, we, we had full face respirators. Okay. Eric wore his, and what was very odd about the whole thing is that the social pressure, I mean, to wear a full face respirator, I mean, a gas mask, I couldn't do it. I had my N95 on, but I couldn't, I couldn't do it because everyone was looking at us like we were total freaks. And I was like, well, social pressure is really, really powerful. Eric was like, he's cool. He doesn't care what anybody thinks, but I, I, I care a little bit more, you know? And so I just wore my N95 and my ball cap and, you know, stayed as far away from everyone as I possibly could. And, and we got on the plane and it was fine. I mean, the, the flights that we've taken, there's no one on those planes, y'all. 
I mean, there were 18 people in our cabin when we came over this time. And, and, and when we had to go to the States for Eric's mother's death, she died a month ago today, I think. And we had to, we had to go there. Um, it was really, really hard and, and bad. And we were there for about just under two weeks. The same was, the same was true for the flights to, to um, Idaho too. No one's on those flights. So we don't feel too, too scared um, about that. But it was just really anxiety provoking. But we did it and then we went home. And then four months later, we came back and we signed uh, the lease here is for uh, 18 months. So it may be that we do half the year here and half the year in Chicago because Eric's work allows for that. My work allows for that. Um, and we love it here. And the other thing, um, yeah, yeah, N95, I mean, for sure. And we only had a couple N95 masks because of course they were sold out everywhere, but we had planned on refinishing a door in the apartment like the summer before. And of course we hadn't done that project yet, but we had like three N95 masks, like actual ones. So we saved them, we saved them for the flight. Um, and, and, er, 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 what was I gonna say? Um, hmm. Something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing about London that's really, that's really true for us is that Eric's from Seattle. He spent a little time in Idaho uh, when he was growing up, but mostly he grew up in Seattle. And Seattle's his town, you know. And he moved to Chicago to be with me when we fell in love and got married. We got married within four months of knowing each other, um, and I love him more every day. And so, but he, so he moved to Chicago because I said, I, I am not leaving Chicago. I left once and I won't do it again. And so Chicago's, you know, my city really. Uh oh, I gotta be careful here. But London, so he moved to Chicago and he, he doesn't know Chicago very well yet because of the pandemic. I mean, we couldn't go anywhere. I mean, he moved and within, you know, not very long, we, the pandemic was happening and we were in DC and anyway, but London is our city because we both moved here and we're discovering it together, you know? So it's really, that's really, that's, I think it's important because no one's grafted on to another, you know? There's there, no one, no one's having to retrofit their lives to a whole new city. I don't, I'm not in Seattle, you know, learning that whole thing on my own really while he knows all about Seattle and, and he's not in Chicago, you know, trying to figure out how to make a, make his way there. I mean, you know, so, but London, we just, we're, we're together discovering it and, and it's a, it's very special. So I think, I think it'll, I think it'll, you know, shake out to be maybe half the year here and half the year in Chicago. And I couldn't be happier. I love it here. I love, I love, London, oh my God, I love it. Um, oh yeah, the KF94 masks, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Seattle's so cool, Seattle's so cool. Um, and, but you know what, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something about London. We have seen some gnarly stuff here. Now I've got a, a disturbing story. Hmm, Myra Seattle is a great town. It's really a great town. Yeah, I love it there. Um, it's a disturbing story. But I mean, this is like, it's so time, right? I don't know. I mean, it's really, hmm, it's pretty dark. Well, I'll just tell you anyway, because we're sewing together and that's how it goes, right? So Eric and I were walking along the strand. I, I, I will tell you, it involves um, it involves a very sort of violent act um, and self harm. Okay, not from me, but if that if that sounds like something you do not want to hear about, that's your that's your that's your warning. You know, I just want to let you know. So. So we were walking on the strand, the famous strand. We had just seen a movie at the Prince Charles Cinema. It's a great, great movie theater. And hey, Sibby Mac, I'm so glad you came to say hi. Thank you so much. 
we're having a good time and 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 I'm telling a disturbing story so um and and I'm telling it because I love London but London has really shown shown herself as a as a huge big old dramatic city right beautiful and and really I mean, really big, full of, uh, I mean, there's just so much going on at every, every moment, every second, and not everything that goes on is, 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 is pleasant, right? So we're walking along the Strand after this movie, and I saw a girl and a boy, and, and, and the ages of these people, which I did not see right away, but, but uh, about tw 20 young adults, very young adults. Um, could not have been older than than 20 years old. I mean, it may have, they may have been a little bit younger. And um, the Strand is a is a busy road. When it's busy, it's very busy, and it's it's a two way road. Um, and yeah, it goes it goes a fair patch. A lot of streets in London are quite small, and they curve. And but the Strand is is fairly goes a fair long fair, fairly long way. Anyway. I, saw, I looked up and I saw this, what I thought was this boy pushing this girl into oncoming traffic. And I screamed because she came so close to being hit by a bus, like full on double decker London bus, classic bus. I mean, he, they, she missed, she, 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 it was if, if a second longer of her being sort of like pitched into the street had happened, she would have been crushed under a bus. And I saw it all. I saw, I, I, and I screamed, I screamed so loud in horror because I thought I was going to see this girl die in, from uh, being hit by a bus. And so I screamed, and then there's something that's that's been true about me for a long time, and that's that's that when I see like something really wrong happen in public, or I see somebody you know being mistreated in public, or like if someone's littering or something like that, I have like I weirdly have no fear. I just I just I, I don't know. I just go up to them, and I I don't have I don't have fear about that. I just can't stand somebody being hurt or or anything so i thought what happened is that he pushed her i thought they were goofing around horsing around well just wait i mean it's it's even worse so so i thought they were goofing around you know and, and maybe they were having like a, a fight or they were arguing and he thought it was funny right i thought this guy had been horsing around and, and, and pushed her and didn't realize just how close she was to traffic and i I screamed and then I was, I just went for him. I was like, did you push her? And I might've said, you know, did you happen to push her? Did you push her? Yeah, cool thing, politic. Hi, I don't know if I saw, saw you yet. Yeah, I did. Um, I was like, did you fucking push her? And I just came at him and, and all of a sudden, and he was, he was sort of like, no, and it all happened in a second. And by the way, it was a very busy street. So other people were, saw this as too, saw this too. And it was just awful. And. And I went up to the guy and, and then suddenly I was aware of this other little girl, right? You know, 18 or something. And she looked terrified and she said, no, 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 he didn't push her. Our friend, she's having a really bad time. She just, she just, no, it's okay, she's okay. She had tried to throw herself into the street and he saved her. She ran into traffic. And what happened next was that this young girl, you know, her friend who was just trembling, I mean, totally in shock, everyone was in shock. It seemed that they were a group of friends, like maybe there were five of them or so. And this young woman, you know, who jumped, she jumped. Uh, they had her sort of up against the wall, protecting her from doing it again, you know, up against the wall of the shop or whatever on the sidewalk. And, and they were like telling her to calm down, like, it's okay, it's okay. And I was up with them, like trying to, I mean, it was just all so crazy. And the girl was, was shaking and crying. And she said, she was saying over and over, why doesn't she love me? Why doesn't my mother love me? Like really, I mean, she was obviously 
obviously in severe distress, right? And she had tried to throw herself into traffic. And and I, the, the young man who, who, who kept her, or maybe it was another young man, there were, like I said, like five different people walking along with her. Um, there was one point where they were they were surrounding her, but but there was so much going on and everyone was so scared. And then of course other people were coming up and like, oh my God, you know, are you okay? And what what what's happening? And I think there was kind of a woman who was maybe trained in social work or mental health. I know it's just awful. It's just awful. She she had a certain way of approaching the young woman that was, I don't know. I just felt like she had some skills right to deal with maybe something of this nature. But the, at one point, they were not guarding her. And I was like looking at her and she had a clear, sh I mean, she had a clear shot to the road again, because they were talking amongst themselves and everyone was trying, it was so chaotic. And I turned to the young man and I was like, you watch her, like, you keep your eyes on her. And I was, you know, everybody's trembling. And he grabbed, you know, he grabbed my shoulders, and and, and 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 it was it was right for him to do it because we were all kind of really freaking out. And he he took me by the shoulders, I should say, and he said, "It's okay, like we've got it, we've got it." And it was such an interesting blend of panic and fear and worry and, but also not anger, but just like back off, lady, you know. And so we had this very sort of intense moment when when. You know, I and so I backed away, and 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 we we sort of walked away. I mean, it was just awful. It was so terrible to think that that almost happened. And I'm glad it didn't happen. And I thought about that girl and what happened. You know, after she left, and I'm sure an ambulance came. And but she was so young, you know, and. Um, I mean, she almost, it almost happened right there. <laughs> so <clears throat> I've never seen that before, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I really, I really did, I did want to help her and, and, and other people did as well. And her friends seemed to be, you know, I don't know. I just, you, you wonder about the conversation that happened before, before that. Um, but, um, there's also, I mean, it's it's as disturbing, but it's a much shorter story. It's not really a story. There was, you know, a lot of drug traffic in our old apartment. Um, I mean, outside our apartment, and and there was this, you know, these junkies. And I've never, know, I never know if that's a, a terrible word to use when you're talking about people who are addicted, right? Terribly addicted. But I mean, heroin, meth uh, users who would camp out all along, kind of right nearby our apartment building that was their place and that's where they got drugs at least one of the places where they got drugs and this one it was a group of about four it was hard to tell how old they were um this one woman eric and i came out one sunday morning and she was flat out on the pavement uh in the sun and we thought perhaps she had died you know this is so, okay I, I i just want to uh I will, I, will, I will not tell other stories like this, okay, um, after I'm done. But, but we thought she had, had, had passed away, and, and then we realized she was breathing very shallowly. We called the ambulance, and, and they, helped, they helped her. And I remember the, the, the ambulance guy, the EMT or whatever, he, I'm going to do a bad, a bad accent, but he said to the woman when he came, he's like, had a bit there, love. <laughs> like, you had a bit. And he was so kind to her, and she was in such, you know, she was, anyway. So, so that was, you know, that was a lot. I mean, we really thought this woman had, had, had passed away right there in the sidewalk outside of our building. So that's pretty intense, you know, London. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen that in Chicago and I lived in New York for a hot second, but I didn't see it there either. I spent time in DC, you know? And so, I mean, it's London, it's, you know, Charles Dickens and it's, you know, um, uh, well, Charles Dickens, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of intense <clears throat> life that happens here <clears throat> and yeah, Sherlock Holmes and all kinds of stuff. Right. And I, I really have, have gotten a taste of that. By the way, that woman was right there the next day in the exact, not in the same, uh, state, but she was there waiting for her dealer, same spot. And I just thought how terrible addiction is and how 
confounding it is, you know. Anyway, so but so London London will test you, but the architecture and the culture and the people, these beautiful people, and every block you see you hear a different accent, you know, and the food and oh my god, it's just. We walk and walk and walk and ride our bikes. And being here in the pandemic, we rode bikes all over the city and kind of learned the city without any people in it, which was pretty cool. So we really rode our bikes all around. And I just, I just love it, the Thames. And so it's, it's a special, special place. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really crazy. Mm. Oh, Molly. Oh. <sighs> mm. Maybe that's, you know, it's why London is so, so incredible because the extremes, you know, the extremes are really, oh my gosh, I mean, oh. We went to, oh, there's two things, two really good things, sort of <laughs> change the change direction. One of, the, one of the things is I saw, I've never seen this before either, there was a, a woman standing outside, Shoreditch is a very hip neighborhood, and, and we were living in Spitalfields, which is pretty hip too, and I saw this woman, and she was so cool. She was so cool. She was just like, like an it girl, you know? And she was standing out, she was in this dress, this, oh, this magnificent dress. It wasn't like a ball gown, but it was just this like fashionable, like cool, like, like most people would say, I could never wear that, you know, because it was just kind of flamboyant and beautiful and it fit her so well. It's hard to describe, but she just looked like a million bucks in this dress. And, and I realized as I passed on my bike that she worked at the shop that she was standing in front of and they sell those dresses there. And so she was this advertisement for the shop because I saw the dress in the window as I rode past and I was like, oh, that is such a, it's so great. It's such a great idea to set, you know, to have this sort of living advertisement for your shop because everybody looked at her and were like, you know, I'm, I was, I know that I thought, where do you get clothes like that? Like how, who are these people in London who are so cool? And you get that dress right there. And I just thought that was great. Maybe it's something that happens a lot, but I had never seen it before and I thought it was brilliant. Um, and the other thing, oh yeah, just about the extremes, like Mayfair, Mayfair, Marianne, you might have to help me out. Hey, hey Natalie. Um, welcome. Yeah, we're just, we're just sewing and oh, I love it. Um, oh, hey, there's my needle. <laughs> Whew, I was worried about that. Um, Mary LeBone, is, is Mayfair, Marianne, if you're still here, are you, is, am I saying that right, Mary LeBone? And, and is, May, sorry, is Mayfair the, sort of the ritziest part of London, one of them? I know Hampstead is really, but wherever it is, I mean, the money that you see. So there's like the junkies, you know, and Spitalfields with tragic lives, you know, at least right now they're tragic. And then you've got, I mean, the money, this is London. It's like, I think the queen still owns, Eric and I just read this, the queen of England still owns like one sixth of all the land on the planet. Really? Mayfair, okay, hi. <clears throat> Marleybone, Marleybone. So Eric, is that right? One sixth of all the land? Um, and I mean, the, 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 it's old money, you know, here in London. And, and there's just something, I mean, Chicago's got its fancy neighborhoods, but there's just like, it's hard. It, like, like there was, have you ever seen Joe versus the volcano? It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. Mayfair, rich, rich, rich. Marianne lives here in England and just outside of London, I think Marianne, or maybe if you lived in London, we would have hung out by now. So maybe you're a little bit further away, but we still should by the way. I mean, why haven't we? Anyway, um, yeah. 
So the addicts hang out where they think they might be able to scare up some money. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the woman we saw, the, junk, the addicts that we saw were in Spitalfields. But then we went to Mayfair on our bikes, you know, and it was just like that contrast was crazy. Um, oh yeah, yeah, and I just read Nancy Mitford. I read P The Pursuit of Love. Nancy Mitford lives in Mayfair, the fancy Mitfords, you know, if you know about that. Um, hey, Elisa. Oh, I can't wait to tell you. Oh, I'll tell you all about it. Um, so, so, so anyway, so Joe versus a volcano, if you, okay, okay. Um, there's a, a scene in Joe versus a volcano when he gets his luggage and it's this super, super fancy luggage. And I mean, I, I just didn't think a place like that existed except in the movies, but there's this shop in Mayfair that sell, I mean, it's so fancy and they sell like these trunks, like these luggage trunks. <laughs> and it's, it's like, I would never go in there. I would, they wouldn't let me in there. It's just so rich. I mean, it's just like, oh my God, like the door is gold basically. It just seems like it's just a different world. It's a different world. I've never seen a place like it. And you know, just the fancy cars, lots of fancy cars, Bugattis and Maseratis and, and all kinds of things. And anyway, so there's a question. Um, Elisa. So Elisa, I'm, I'm really glad you're here. Welcome. Um, you've come to this this show, this stream, this channel, I should say, on a kind of a different day. We've never done this before where we're just kind of sewing together and I'm chattering away. Um, I put all the shows up on YouTube that, that I do here on Twitch because people can discover them a little bit easier because Twitch, not many quilt quilters are on Twitch. But rather than do a YouTube live show, or a Facebook live show, I decided to come here because Twitch is just a live streaming platform. It's all that Twitch does. And so they have some 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 cool cool stuff that, that, that they can do because they really focus on live streaming. And I don't I haven't figured it all out yet, <laughs> but I'm excited to I mean it's only been two months that I've that I've been over here. But I think I think Quilter's Quilters are such a, cur cur they're curious about things and they they like to hang out with other quilters and sew and look at cool, look at quilts and things. And I just felt like giving people a new place to go for a new kind of show felt more special, you know? So that's, that's a little bit of why. And I'm glad that you watched some of the replay um, of Quilt Church. That's the official name now, Quilt Church. And I hope you'll come to that show too, you know, and and be in the chat and ask questions and hang out. The community that's growing here is really great. They're my friends. Uh oh, Marianne, I did it. I got it tangled. Shoot. Ah, saved at the last second. Yes, yes, just a guy. Yes. Like Louis Vuitton, huge, huge trunks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marianne, fact about Knightsbridge. Oh yeah, Herod's. Oh wow, okay. So Marianne says there's a fact about Knightsbridge where Herod's is, Herod's department store. Even if you've never been to London, you might have heard of you know Herod's. The, the, the Knightsbridge has more Ferraris per square mile than anywhere else on earth. I could be making that up, but you see what I mean. I think you're probably not making it up. And I went to Selfridges. I went to Selfridges, which is this other very famous. There's like Harvey Nichols, Harrods, Selfridges. I went to Selfridges and and I, I, do, I did kind of want to get a new purse. You know, it was like kind of a desperate situation and and I went there and I was in the the Gucci Fendi part, <laughs> the Gucci Fendi um, um, Prada. I really love Prada. One day, maybe I'll be able to afford to buy a Prada purse just like that. But, um, but I was there in that, you know, super expensive. And I went up to this woman 
and I said, hi, um, is there, <laughs> I was like, is there a, 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 a section or if, where, where are the, um, how did I put it? I said, is there, are there handbags like a little bit less expensive? I mean, I was just looking for like the slightly less expensive handbags. I said, is there a, a department or something? And she said, oh, this whole floor is handbags. I mean, the whole floor is handbags. I was like, oh, okay. So I just need to walk like a mile in that direction, basically. It was crazy. The whole floor is handbags. Selfridges and Harrods in particular, Marianne. I mean, Harrods is not, it's almost not fun for me to be there. I've been there twice. It's so big. It's so huge. It's like five city blocks or something. I, I, I mean, I, I can't find anything. I'm like, and they have, they're so big and so fancy that they have like a whole, um, a whole department for like, you know, Ming vases, you know, what department store has like, oh, that's the Ming vase department, you know, kind of like that. And I'm just, it's just sort of intimidating. And anyway, but they're beautiful. I mean, it's amazing. Harrods looks like a palace. It's very cool. So you should all come to London if you haven't been here. Okay. Ooh, Myra. So you're talking to Marie. First ever quilt. Oh, okay. Good, good. Talking quilts. That's excellent. Hmm. Myra, I know the needles of which you speak. I also have those black gold. I have them in my little pouch. They are so tiny. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. The roasted chicken at Harrods. Well, that's what I'll go for. And I'll just find the cafe and... You know, telling that terrible story that I told earlier, did not affect my sewing, but when I was talking about purses, <laughs> it's not my best work. It's not my best work. Hmm. Oh, for the binding on this, by the way, I'm just, uh, I'm just turning over the back. Another another just totally like unacceptable totally unacceptable right to uh well oh well okay yeah you can't see it because of because of the white but i'm just turning over the back onto the front it's all allowed i don't know maybe i'm maybe i i i think think um <laughs> maybe i think you know differently than other people do but I mean growing up in the Fonz and Porter world I mean and by growing up I mean I started to make quilts when I was 28 years old and you know was thrust into the national spotlight like immediately because powers it be that bought Fonz and Porter a couple years before or like a year before they were very excited to know that Fonz the Younger was interested in quilts and so they were like would you like to be on the show would you like to be part of the, you know, they wanted a, a, a Fonz to stick around, you know, because they bought this brand and Marianne and Liz, Fonz and Porter were, were going to leave, you know, so like, what were they going to do? So I came along and got thrust into the whole thing. And I, I was happy to, to, to do it. I fell in love with making quilts. But I grew up kind of like in a hothouse flower kind of thing. You know, it was like, it was, I, I couldn't, could not do anything like I'm doing now. I mean, are you kidding? Like I, any quilt I made was for the show. It was for the, the magazine, you know, and I loved the quilts I made, but there was very little room to play, <clears throat> very little room for, you know, whimsy because everything I made, you know, we would teach it on the show. So like I would make a block or, or they would say, we really want to use this ruler on a show next season. So can you make a quilt using this particular ruler? And so I would, but I mean, it's, and it's frustrating too, because that show was great, but like the whole time I was on it, which was like five years, we never did needle turned applique. I don't, I, we didn't, we didn't. And we never did like, you know, uh, knife edge binding. You know, we looked at that the other day. Um, I've got chamomile. 
chamomile and I've got water over there that I should be, I should be drinking. Um, and I've got chips, always chips. But um, we never did, yeah, like knife edge binding technique, I don't think. Sometimes, like we did petty points. We did a few different techniques that were kind of unusual, but a lot of the time we were, we were sewing pretty basic patchwork and that's good, that's good. But you know, this kind of quilt would never have been on the show. I could not have made this quilt during my time at Fonz and Porter because you, the quilts that you make, you use to teach or you put in the magazine and no one would teach this. You can't write a pattern for this quilt or you could, but no, no. My idea about this would be like, oh, do you like this quilt? Great, make a pictorial quilt of your own. You know, have fun making your own, your own kind. So I'm, I feel very free now. And that's good. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna finish this circle and then I'm gonna switch to my hand quilting. And I'm just gonna keep going. I mean, what else am I doing tonight, you know? What else am I doing tonight? I don't know, nothing. This is the best thing I, I mean, what, else, what am I gonna watch Netflix some more? <laughs> I don't know. And on Twitch, some people, I mean, it's like a thing where you do like a eight hour stream or like a 24 hour stream. I'm not doing that, but, but it's like a thing that people do on Twitch. They play video games for like eight hours straight. Yeah, I know. Let's see. Um, da -da 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 -da. That's how great grandma did her bindings. Wasn't fussy, right? Like, why worry about making all that binding? Just turn the back over. It's done, you know? Natalie, I can count on one hand the small quilts I've hand quilted, but you're, you're a juki on a grace frame with a stitch regulator. Heck yeah! So... Natalie, you're a long armor extraordinaire. Much respect. Long arming, it's a skill, man. It's a skill. I'd like to, I'd like to be able to do it, but you have to have a long arm. <laughs> I hardly have room for a sewing machine, so. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna switch. Yeah, I'm gonna switch to my hand piecing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that <clears throat> because that sounds fun to me. Okay. And yeah, and just a guy, oh wait, no, Myra. I was afraid being at my first ever retreat it would be intimidating. Oh, you were at a modern quilt guild retreat. Oh, quilt police energy happening, hmm. Oh, oh, you were worried about that, but it didn't happen. <laughs> Only one quilter warned you about wonky half square triangles, as in you were making some. You were at risk of making them. Yeah, I don't have to sell anything. Praise God. True, Brendan, true. And just a guy, you know, is it Charles? Is it Charles, just a guy? I think you told me. Um, yeah, Quilty. When I left Quilty, it, yeah, it didn't last terribly long um, before it went away. And, and I mean, I don't know. It was it was kind of kind of a problem. I mean, a lot of I mean, I how do I say this? Quilty was like a brainchild of mine. Like it was really something that I I I helped. Sh of course, I did not do it alone. But the the vibe of Quilty, you know, Spoolie and the show, kind of being kind of silly. I mean, it was really my personality was coming through in that project. It's true. And when I left, you know, that kind of I mean, I wasn't there to, to kind of put that personality kind of in it and kind of keep it there. And like I said, I did not do any of that by myself. It was a lot of people working together. So it's not like, oh, you know, I was not the only person working on that. However, it was kind of the creative direction it was my responsibility, you know? And so when I left, the creative direction fell to someone else or fell to other people and it wasn't quite the same. And I think, I think, you know, for various reasons. And, and there are other reasons why things stop, magazines cease and all that, but, um, you know, financial and whatnot. But I think it was just, I don't know. Quilty, yeah, Quilty went away pretty pretty soon after I left and 
like I said, there's probably many reasons why it did, but one of the reasons why it did is because I was not there. <laughs> okay, let's just, just call it like it is. Okay, quilty binge, oh man, oh. Myra watched, yeah, 150 episodes, binge watched. Oh. That makes me really happy. I miss Quilty. Oh. That makes me feel good and sad. Mhm. Mm well, thanks all for what, for saying that about Quilty. It was it was it was a fun little show, and and the best part about it is that. Yeah, I mean, I got to work with the cool people, including my brother-in-law who directed Quilty and my sister, Rebecca, who produced it. I mean, we made, what is it, 257 episodes or something? It was on for five years. We made 52 episodes a year, 200 and whatever that is. And um, wait, more than that. God, 52 episodes. Yeah, anyway, working with them was the best part. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do now. And, and if you just come in, I'm going to show my quilt again so you can see what it is I'm working on. Because if you're new, if you're new here, I'm working on this, this quilt. I mean, it's, it's sort of a, it's a, it's a wall hanging, right? So it's my COVID quilt. So it's a uh, hand needle turned applique. Okay. Oh, that's that errand thread. Okay. Um, needle turned applique and uh, vintage quilt blocks sewn, uh, applique on, and it says, stay safe, USA 2020. I did start it last year <laughs> in true quilter fashion. Whoop. True quilter fashion, stop COVID-19. There's my thimble. My American flag is not finished. I've got the um, uh, essential workers there, houses, stay safe, stay home, you know, kind of thing. Little nurse. Oh, the M and the E is for Mary and Eric, of course. And then one love, seemed appropriate. Yeah, houses, flowers, things like that. Little animals. Yeah, so that's what I'm working on. And I've decided to stop hand quilting that for a moment and switch to this. We make, we make quilts here. You can make whatever you want. I hope you will. Okay, so I'm gonna readjust the camera because I wanna show you what I'm doing. This is not a demo. I'm, I mean, I gotta say that because if, it, here's the thing, if people come here hoping to learn, <laughs> to learn how, I mean, I've given a few tips. I've given a few tips since we've started. However, you know, this is having, having made professional how-to television, before for quilters, this is not, you know, the ideal setup. You want high definition cameras, you want four cameras, you want a jib. Look at those, ter I have not had a pedicure in almost two years, you know that? Um, <clears throat> I'll survive. So, so yeah, so, so, you know, I'm gonna show you what I'm working on. I'm doing hand piecing, but, um, you know, to teach you how to do what I'm doing, and I'm still learning it, um, I don't think that that's, I think you should set your expectations a little bit differently, okay? Because you won't be able to see it terribly well, but you'll be able to see what I'm doing, I think. Okay. It'll be a, a little bit weird while I figure this out. Okay. Great production. Yeah, yeah, Quilty on YouTube, right? Mmm. Sue. Sue, I'm so I'm glad you like my quilt. Um Oh, Akhil. Um, as a mental health support worker. Tyler, should we call you Tyler? Just a guy, Tyler. Whatever you okay, whatever you prefer. <laughs> Video game. Akhil or Tyler, you tell us. Um Watching someone actually do it helps beginners. Yeah, 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 Quilty, that was always the thing because, you know, I was like, the, the, the idea behind Quilty was, you know, people, 
like it, it would happen to me. It would happen to me and I would see it happen too on Fonz and Porter on that show. People would say, well, then you just sew your hat, your quarter inch and, and, and then that's it, you know, it's easy. And I was like, but, but wait, <laughs> people don't know how to sew a quarter inch seam if they've never made a quilt. They don't know what that means. And so coming to quilting myself, you know, new, I was like, no, 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 no. You say this is a beginner quilt project, but it isn't, you know, this thing that you say you're gonna teach a beginner how to, how to make a quilt. It was like, you don't even understand. No one knows how to thread a needle. I mean, the, a true beginner doesn't know how to thread their needle, uh, uh, thread their sewing machine. And here's my theory about it. This was one of the things. Uh, okay, good, Ackhill, Ackhill, Ackhill. Um, Ackhill, I'm gonna really try to remember that, Ackhill. Um. <laughs> That's brilliant. Your grandson's very smart. Um, so, so here's the thing. When I, when some, some of you were growing up, we have all ages in this, in this uh, room right now, but when my mom's generation was uh, younger, there were home economics or family and consumer science classes, right? That was part of the curriculum. And you would learn how to, how to sew. And I mean, a lot of people made their clothes in my mom's generation and before that too, you know, making your clothes at home was a thing that happened. And there was a sewing machine in everybody's house is, you know, in general, like people had sewing machines or access to one. But then over time, it became cheaper to buy your clothes instead of make them. And so the sewing machine, as I say in lectures sometimes, you know, it went from being a fixture in the house to, it went into the closet. And then in a lot of homes, it went into the garage. And then it went to the garage sale. And just fewer and fewer homes had a working sewing machine at home. And so my generation, we did not grow up on a sewing machine. We didn't, we don't know. So, so, and, and when I was in high school or junior high, I had one quarter of a year in home economics. And then, and I, one, and I think, and we cycled, you know, we did wood, wood shop and then we did, you know, consumer, family and consumer science and whatnot. We made a drawstring bag. I remember hating it, hating sewing it. We made chocolate chip cookies and I learned how to sign a check in that class and that's it. And so when I was like, okay, I wanna make a quilt, the assumptions that people made about my skills were really intimidating. Cause it's like, I didn't wanna say like, I don't know how to change this bobbin. I, I do not know. And I'm Marianne Fonz's daughter. So it was like really embarrassing. But the truth is, is that I, I mean, I wasn't alone. I was like, Ugh. and I asked my friend, Sarah, I was like, if you were gonna make a quilt, what would you do? Hey, Malrose. Yes. I'm so glad you're here. Um, oh yeah, Tara Fawn, and it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, yeah, great, Akil. Good, good. Um, and Caroline's back. That's great. So, so I asked my friend Sarah, I was like, if you were going to make a quilt, and she has no sewing experience at all. This was years ago. This was before I pitched Quilty, basically, to the powers that be at Fonz and Porter. I was like, if you were gonna make a quilt, what would you do? And she said, in 2009 or 10, she said, I would, I'd look it up on YouTube. I would go to YouTube. And I was like, okay. So I called the person at Fonz and Porter who would make this happen, Mr. Kent. And I said, I, I, wanna, I think we should do a show and it should be for the ultra beginner and it should be called mm, Quilty. And I just like, Quilty. And I was at Quilt Market and I was on the phone and I was like, I think we should do this. And then we met with the other people and they said, okay, let's give it a try. And that was Quilty. And we did shows like, why does my bobbin do that? And all kinds, of, all kinds of them, you've seen them. Okay, so this is what I'm making. It's, it's so embarrassing. I mean, I can't get this one part. All of the fabric, all of the fabric that I'm using was given to me by the London Modern Quilt Guild. Marianne, this is still the fabric that I have, that I'm using. <sighs> Amazing, okay. Yikes. 
is so messy. I don't like that at all. Okay. I like to keep a, keep a clean workspace. All right, let's see. So what I'm, what I'm wanting to do, what I'm trying to do, succeeding in parts of it and failing in other parts of it. So, so, I have to put this over there. Don't fall apart, don't fall apart. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, okay, let me, let me try it. Here's my chips. So these stars, and this is hand pieced, right? Because, because I don't have a sewing machine. So I'm making this quilt top. That's these hand pieced stars and these hexagons. Okay. Won't be able to see a ton of it, you know, but you can see, you can see some of it. Okay, it's kind of chaotic here. I, I I don't I don't like chaos. I like things to be to be nice and neat. But sometimes I mean I, this is the first time I've ever done this. So one day, Eric, if you're still in the chat, let's get me a studio, a real nice studio. How about that? Okay. Don't look at this. This is a total failure. This this one. But I think you can kind of see what's going on. The star is fine, but the other the other part is just awful. I think it's off the, the shot. Let me let me change the lighting just a little. Because it's pretty bright now. Do I have a silver gel pen to draw the quarter inch line? I don't, but I'll show you what I do have, Caroline. Um, okay, and then, you know, it goes along like that. So yeah, I really, I wanted to do a black, I want to use solid black and lots of scraps. And it's really, it's really fun hand piecing all this. And the stars are okay. Hey Elsa, okay, Elisa. <laughs> yes, yes, it's true, it's true. Yeah, I've got a white pen and a ye I've ye yellow as well. And I've got um, a darker one as well. Yes, indeed, it's true. You need several different, uh, several different colors if you're doing, you know, darks and lights and all of that. It's very true. Um, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. So the stars are okay. It's these hexagons. Getting these things set in is. I don't know why it is so tough for me, but I'm, I'm getting there. It's close. It's I'm close. I'm close, but I, I have to. So you see, I've got like, I've got my little white marker, Caroline. Oops. Sorry. I've, I've got my little white pen to mark my lines, my quarter inch seam there for the hexagons. And then I'm using my little friction pen to mark my lines on, on the white. Yeah. So I think I'll make a few stars. I'll make a couple stars and then we'll see, you know, we'll see if we can go, can go on. Actually, I need to cut diamonds, but I'll use what I have here. Hang on. How much hand piecing have you done? Yeah? We all done any? Okay, let's see. One, two, three. I have to mark that one still. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to, going to try to not do a demo and yet, what is that? That's the microphone. Nope. 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 Okay. Lots of hand piecing, eh? 
Demarie, there's something, there's just something that's not working for me when I set in those hexagons. I don't know why. It shouldn't be any different from my other set-ins. I don't get it. I don't get it. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, hand piecing, mm-hmm. That's some Chopin. I'm playing it off my laptop because I couldn't, I couldn't, yeah. Usually I can play it through this program. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've got these little, I've got these little templates. Oh, and this is a great tool the quarter inch seam marker, the add a quarter ruler. I think it's pretty, it's pretty essential for a quilt. All right, I've got to mark the rest of these. There's just a little bit here. So if you've just come in, and there's a couple that, um, yeah, this is not the usual format for the show, but it sure is nice. Okay. Oh, I guess I could mark up, I can mark up this mat because the friction pen just goes away with heat and this is my little ironing surface. So, you know, I had never had one of these, one of these, I never had one before, but I, I mean, until I make something really huge, this is the way to go, people. This mat, cutting mat, ironing surface. <gasps> this is the way to be. I love it. Cause I'm in a, you know, I'm in an apartment, man. It's great. Okay. So, so remember, this is not a demo, but I'm going to show you what I do here. So these little marks, right? The little X's X marks the spot and you can, um, there are tools and templates and things that you papers you can put onto your fabric that, that give you little dots, right? To, to mark the, the little dots, uh, in the place where these two lines intersect and and you'll see why you would want that but i i mark the whole thing because my hand pieced quarter inch seam is not quite so ingrained in my memory yet okay let me do this <laughs> sandpaper oh i think caroline i think i've a sandpaper board. Is that to keep things from slipping? Is that what you're talking about? I think that's what you mean. I think I've, I've heard of that. We might have done something like that on the show. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> Elisa, you know what? You can vacuum and we'll probably be here for a little bit longer. I'm going to do at least at least one star. I mean, if we we did a three hour stream the other night. Oh, oh, and okay, so another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double up this thread. And I don't think you have to do it, but this, I'm missing a, 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 a size needle. I've got Sashiko and then I've got, I've got those black gold and possibly narrow needles, but then I've got these and so, they're just, so this, this thread is, is I think 80 weight or something crazy, but I just don't have many supplies here. All right, you don't fail me now, no. Um, so I've got to use what I, what I have and it's just so thin and fine. I want to, I'm going to double it up.
And I'll make a, a heartier knot because it is such fine thread. It's fine thread. Okay. So I put my pretty sides together here. This is not a demo. And then the little where the little X's are. And it, maybe you've all maybe you've all done this, okay? Don't lick the thread, lick the needle. Ooh, that's good. I like that. That's that's great. That's great. And someone else said thread the thread and not the needle. That's really good. Lick the needle. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do it the next one I do. Okay, so putting a pin through the little X on one of these guys. And then I pin match, this is called, I think. Yeah. It's not a demo. Okay, and then I just kind of keep that. And I'm gonna sew toward the pin and I'm gonna stop right when I get there. And I'm gonna also put my needle in right at the X on this little guy and the X on this little guy. All right. Okay, hmm, I wonder, I mean, can I get closer to this? Can I show you this a little bit easier? Hmm, interesting. Okay, so I just do a running stitch And sort of it gets sort of gathered, and that's all right. And then you pull it through and kind of smooth it out like that. You know, if, if this happens <clears throat> every weekend, I will actually get a quilt done. I mean, it's a good reason to do it, honestly. I mean, I'll actually, if I sew for three hours every Sunday, I mean, it won't always be possible, but like, really. Okay, so then you sew right up until you get to the pin. Hang on, I'm trying to show the camera and I need to actually look at it. Okay, and then take it up the pin. And you don't sew past that little X. I don't take a back stitch. So, so Jenny Byer is the person that I um, sort of trust with this technique. But there's so many other, there's so many ways to do this stuff. Oh, where's my, where's my loop here? Okay. So that opens like that. Okay. Yeah, this is R fill, I believe. So interesting. Okay, Dee Marie, and you've done a lot of piecing, hand piecing. You use 80 weight. So you don't double it. Hmm. That is good to know. Huh. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Michelle, I'm telling you. Y'all, I'm telling you, this, I mean, I have not made a quilt in so long and this is the way to get it done. My mom always said, it, when people said, how long does it take to make a quilt? And mom said, you know, quilt takes a long time to make if you're not working on it. <laughs> but if you're working on it, it doesn't really take that long. Okay, so now I wanna put this guy, hang on. So I want this here. But I've left this open, right? That that little seam seam allowance thing. Okay. You know, the seam allowance thing. So do the same thing where you pin match. God, I hope I don't screw this up. It would be embarrassing. I think I may, I may, we'll go till, 
till seven my time, and then I probably should have some dinner and talk to, talk to my husband. I mean, you know. Oh, you know what? Did I do that right? I mean, well, when I've been making you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna do this differently because Jenny Beyer told me that when you're sewing together your first two little things, okay, have your seam allowance, oh yeah, I, pr I finger pressed it, seam allowance going to the left, okay, underneath. Seam allowance going to the left and then when you put on the next piece, have your seam allowance going to the right. That's what Jenny says, so that's what I wanna do. Let's see if I can make that happen. Does that make sense, Marie? Okay. Signature thread, interesting, okay. I've always used Aurifil, but I don't know, you know, I don't know about other threads because Aurifil is a, a quilty. They sponsored quilty, so I was always using that. I don't know anything else. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna do the pin and do the pin. Okay. And I'm sewing toward toward the seam. You know, I'm not gonna double up the thread now, Marie. Because if you say if you say I don't need to do it. I ain't doing it. Okay. It it's it really doesn't tangle. It's great. I mean, I thought it would tangle, snarl like terribly, but it doesn't. So I think next time I, I mean next Sunday, you want to hang out again? You want to do it? Um, you know, I'll I'll do a little social media post and because I feel I feel like this is okay. You know, nothing truly disastrous happened. And and I can practice this week doing the hexagon part because I really want to make this quilt. I mean, I'm really, ah. <laughs> I really want to make this quilt. And so I don't want to, oh, I didn't put my pin in. Oh, well, damn. But if there's more, even more people here, I mean, you all, I know you pretty well <laughs> and you won't mind if I screw up, but. And so that, so I sewed with the seam going to the right that time. Oh yeah. And now let me. Hmm. Hang on, hang on. You want to hang out next week? Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, Caroline, about the black pieces is, it's just another set in seam, you know? It shouldn't be, that looks pretty good. It shouldn't be so hard, you know? It should just be the same thing. It's a partial seam, but there's something about the shape of it that's just confounding me oh. anyway you know what i think i think i i think i need some real food chips a woman cannot eat and i cannot live on chips alone i try i've been trying um but i do think it's it's yeah i need to take a break so so thank you so much i mean yeah I really, I, I really, I really am grateful to you. And um, yeah, twitch at maryfonz.com. That's this email address I have now. And so um, if, you, if you have tips or you have ideas or things that you'd like 
if you have things that you'd like to see or do or like i don't know i don't know this is all still being created so i mean i may not be able to take a suggestion i may i may just run with something i don't know but but it's obviously a conversation, right? That's obviously the point, is that I can research on my own, but it's way more fun with you. I can sew on my own, but it's way more fun with you. So, okay, good. Well, we'll do it again. It's nice hanging out with you all too. And sorry to end sort of quickly, but I, this wave of like tiredness came over me and I've learned to listen to that, you know? In those quilty days, I just ignored it, but okay. Love to you all and, and be good and not too good. And I'll see it. Yeah, I'll see you Tuesday. I'll see you Tuesday for quilt nerding. We'll nerd out, okay? Bye. Bye, Kate.